What's going on, everybody? Oh, sorry for the wait there. Uh, always technical issues with lives, but we are here. I hope you are doing so well, and uh, welcome to the live stream. This is something that is new, something that I'm trying out, and I hope you enjoy these. Let me know uh, in the comments right now if you may. Now today, in this video, we're gonna be talking about this right here. This, this is the Newton Brewer. It's a manual espresso brewer that we're gonna dive all into today. And I wanna ponder the question, is this, is this as good as this guy right here, the Flare Pro 2. You've probably seen this before. This is not a new brewer by any means. And so I wanna ponder the question, is it better? Now this video, this video is not, this is not a comparison video. Rather, this is just a review and talking about how it compares to the Flare Pro 2. I thought I would do this live because I've been really enjoying connecting with all of you guys, especially your last live. So if we, uh, if you could do me a huge favor before we dive into this, smash that like button. It tells the YouTube algorithm that this is a video worth watching and especially to other specialty coffee lovers. And then let's dive right into this. Now, what is the Brewa? What is this thing right here? First of all, I think we can all agree this is a beautiful device. Now that's subjective. I shouldn't say we can all agree, but I personally, I like it. I think it's pretty nice looking. But what is it? Now this is, like I've already said, this is built in New Zealand and it is a manual espresso brewer. Now this is built out of some unique materials. This brew chamber is aluminum. It's aluminum and this is a fully steel body. It's pretty unique in that way. Now this has a different mechanism and different materials than some other manual brewers. So I thought it would be worth talking about today. Now one thing that I really enjoy that this brewer has is a 51.7 millimeter port filter basket. Now for some of you that aren't really entrenched into the espresso world, that might not intrigue you, that might not even interest you, but there's something really interesting about this. This is the same basket as the La Pavonis. Okay, you can use the accessories from those brewers or the port filter baskets, rather the aftermarket baskets for the Newton Brewer. Pretty, pretty unique. Now we'll dive into how this brews coffee and we'll brew a coffee together a little later on. But what's the price? How does this much cost? Because that's it's a pretty important topic. And this one comes in at $350, $348 US for the model with a uh, pre-adjusted flat tamper. And the model that comes with this tamper right here, it's a $10 upgrade for $360. And now this tamper, hopefully you can see it here in the live, it's pretty beautiful. It's pretty unique. Definitely worth the upgrade. So today, let's talk about what I love, what I don't love, and uh, talk about who this brewer is for. But first, why don't we, why don't we brew a coffee? Let's do that. Now I'm gonna try and attempt doing this live. Uh, normally, normally I would edit B-roll and speed this up a little bit, but I've got my kettle over here, and I'm gonna walk you through the whole process. Hopefully, not make a fool of myself on YouTube, on live YouTube. So, <laughs> wish me luck. Now I'm gonna use uh, some glasses here. One of the downsides, and we're gonna talk more about this with this brewer, is it doesn't have enough space for a scale that I own. Now I use the Lunar here, and it's a pretty small espresso scale, but it doesn't fit, it doesn't fit. An issue that I had with the robot, and if you haven't watched that video, be sure to go watch that video. Uh, I compare the robot to the Flare 58. Now this has that same issue. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm gonna be doing the unthinkable, the unimaginable, and I'm not gonna weigh my shot, at least not live. And I probably will be canceled on, on the internet for this, but <laughs> um, I am going to weigh out my glass beforehand and after, just because I don't have a scale for this. That's my own fault. It's partially a fault of the brewer, but we'll talk more about that later. Now, this does require preheating. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually preheat this twice. It's a pretty thick, it's about a centimeter and a half thick aluminum. And aluminum is a pretty good, um, Inductor, it holds heat pretty well and it heats up fairly quick, but even still, I, I'd like to make sure that these are, this is nice and hot. Similar to the Pro 2, you wanna make sure this is nice and pipe and hot. So I'm gonna flush this water real quick. I'm gonna put this over here. Like I said, I'm going to run some hot water through this twice. Now, while I'm doing this, let me know in the chat, the live chat, if the music volume's okay. I've got some background music volume playing, so I'd love to know if the mic volume's okay, the music's okay. Last time you guys told me that it was a little quiet, so I tried to adjust that for this stream. Okay, 
Okay, so I'm gonna dose out for this 16 grams of coffee. Now I'm using a washed Ethiopian and this has been a coffee that's been fairly hard to dial in. It's been pretty tough. Um, so I've pulled about eight shots on the Newton just today alone uh, with this coffee. And every time it's been just slightly off. So we're gonna see if we can get it dialed in this time. See if it'll make a good coffee. Okay, so with this here, now you're gonna have to unscrew the bottom and hopefully there's no water left in here. And there's not, perfect. Now I'm gonna be adding this to the port filter basket. I've got a towel here. I'm just gonna wipe out any water that's in this basket. And then the actual chamber that holds the port filter in place is also a dosing funnel. So you can place this right on top, just like, let me see if I can show the camera here, just like that. And this will actually act as a dosing funnel for our coffee, which is really unique and really convenient when using something like the Niche Zero that has a 58 millimeter dosing cup. All right, now I'm not gonna use any WDT or any distribution tools here today just for the sake of the live. So I'm just gonna go ahead and tamp this and hopefully we get some good results. Now, if you're just showing up to the live, we're talking about the Newton Brewer today and we're brewing a coffee. Now, I'm not gonna be weighing my coffee just because I don't have a scale that actually fits under this uh, under this brewer. So I do apologize. I know I'm a madman, I'm crazy, uh, but that's okay sometimes. Sometimes it's just easy to get simple with espresso, which we're gonna talk about because this brewer just exemplifies everything about that. Regardless of that, I'm going to still zero out my cup here and we're gonna time this shot. Now, one of the interesting things about the Newton is it has a piston style brew chamber. And what it does is it actually, you can fill this up as you saw in the B-roll at the beginning of this video. Um, it has a space where once you pull it up, the top, the top of the brew chamber actually becomes completely flat. And I don't have a second camera here. I wish I did, hopefully eventually, but uh, you won't be able to see the top down here. But right now I can't see any of the water. It's been sucked into the piston. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do something called a Filoni shot. Now this is something that my friend Justin at Daddy's Got Coffee pointed out to me today. We were chatting back and forth and he said, this is a great idea uh, for this brewer. So what I'm doing is pre-infusing right now. I put this down about a quarter of the way and I'm gonna top up my brew chamber, something that you can't do with the Pro 2. Uh, especially not, no, not at all. You can't do that. So uh, what I'm doing is topping this up and then now I'm going to, after about 10 seconds, I'm going to then pull up and fill up the chamber again so that there's no air in the chamber. And then I'm gonna press down here and hopefully we result in a good shot. Now with this brewer here, you wanna press it until you hear that sis. Uh, some brewers, you wouldn't wanna do that, like the Flare 58, um, but this one you do. The chamber itself doesn't hold a lot of water, so the result is you're actually wanting to get rid of almost all of the water uh, that's pressed through. And then the result is about 40 grams out. So I put 16 grams in. So let's test this out and then we'll talk about it. Okay, the shot is delicious. Guys, this is a delicious tasting coffee. And not only this coffee, the brewer just makes fantastic espresso. In my experience, 90% of the espressos I make, while not perfect, 
They're simple and they just have a great complexity to them. High sweetness, uh, great body, not perfect body with that 51 millimeter uh, basket. I find it's just different than what I'm used to in using like a 58 millimeter espresso machine. Uh, it's just a different texture to the espresso, but it's delicious, it's yummy, and it's fun to use. So let's dive into the pros and the cons of the brewer. What do I love? What do I not love so much? And then who is this for? Now, the first thing we gotta talk about, it's beautiful. I mean, again, subjective, but I think this is a beautiful design. This is something that's simple, it's small and it's well built. It's just absolutely a gorgeous piece to put on your kitchen, on your brew bar, wherever you might go. They have definitely thought of this well. And for me, this just screams everything about New Zealand. I don't know about you, hopefully you agree with that. This is a beautiful brewer and I love that. Now, something that is pretty important to a lot of people because this is gonna sit on your kitchen. You know, this is gonna sit on your brew bar, it's visible. And some people don't love the look of something like the Flare 58. Again, subjective and everybody has their own opinions. But personally, I think this is a pretty beautiful design. Now, again, like I said, this used that 51 millimeter basket, that 51.7 millimeter basket. And that's great because that opens up so many possibilities of aftermarket baskets uh, from the La Provoni. So if you're into those kind of espresso machines or maybe you've always wanted to dabble in that, but you don't want to spend that much money um, this is just another option right this is another manual brewer uh, but can use some of those accessories from that brewer which is great this isn't proprietary and it's basket size which is a huge huge plus now another thing the brewer is minimal i think this is a minimal brewer in every aspect of what it does first it's design there's no taking this apart this doesn't unscrew it doesn't fold down like something like the pro 2 it is just minimal in every single aspect. And it's actually something that I love. There's not 50 million pieces that I have to build together and plungers and putting, you know, gauges in certain areas. Some people love that. This one is just simply screwing on that portafilter after tamping and brewing. It's very minimal in its design. And like I've already said, it's got a fantastic build quality. Everything about this just screams high quality. Everything from the wood uh, woods that it uses to the metals that it uses. And again, this is fully aluminum. It feels very, very well, well built. And I have no issues with the build quality. Not something that I can say with the Flare 58. Now the Pro 2, back to the, pon the question that we're pondering in this video. Is it as good as the Flare Pro 2? Is this a Pro 2 killer? Um, and we're gonna talk about that, but the quality on the Pro 2 is pretty good too. But the Pro 2 uses metal pieces, but uses like some rubbers and some different textures where this is aluminum, steel, and wood. So just a little bit different there. And then of course the flavor, how does it taste? And this is the most important question that we need to ask today. And the answer is great. Honestly, the, the espresso is fantastic. I have no complaints when it comes to the taste quality of the Brua. Uh, I've had some bad shots, but I've had some really excellent shots too. Like I've already mentioned, they're high in complexity, uh, a lot of sweetness. They lack some of the body that you would experience from some other espresso brewers. But overall, I've had some really great shots. Uh, people who also have this brewer, just exchanging thoughts with them, they experience the same thing. The espressos they have tasted have been delicious, have been good. Um, and, and yeah, overall, it's a great experience. And it's just a simple process. But this isn't a perfect brewer. So let's talk about what I don't love, what I'd like to see improved on the brewer if they ever did a version two. And one of those things would definitely be the space under the group head. Now you can see here, this, uh, this has about, I would say two inches if between the group head and the stand. When this is on a table, it's not a lot of space. If I put a Kruv cup here, for example, you can barely fit a scale under there which is an issue, you know, depending on what cups you use, depending on what scale you use, if you use a scale, um, then that would be an issue. And so I would love to see that group head just raised a little bit and just improved in that way. I would also love to see, and maybe you've already expected me to say this, is space for a scale. Again, I've used the Luna right now and there's not a lot of space. I can't fit a scale in between these legs. It's a little frustrating if I'm honest. Now, this is a personal issue. I just don't have a scale uh, for this brewer, but I'm sure I'm not alone in this. I'm sure there are many people who don't have a scale for something like the brewer. You can go on Amazon and you can get a $20 scale. Uh, my friend Chris, who does amazing YouTube videos, uh, he, he talks all about a $20 scale that he's, it's basically unreplaceable and it's tiny and small. You could get something like that for the brewer. 
but I don't have that. And so for me, I've now got to go out and buy a scale to fit under this brewer. So I would love them to expand those feet, not a big ask, to be able to fit something like a scale underneath that. Another thing I'd love to see them fix on the Brewa is more water capacity in the group head. Okay, this is, this is a common issue and others who have used this have experienced the same thing. And that's the idea that inside this group head, you, you really can't fit a lot of water. You know, it, it, you, like if I didn't pull that brewer lever back up halfway through the brew, do a Filoni shot as my friend Justin pointed out to me, then I would have a very small yield. Um, often a one to two exactly, if not just a little bit less, depending on how much water that coffee has absorbed. And that doesn't leave a lot for uh, different recipes that we wanna brew. If all you wanna do is one to two recipes, you're Gucci. But if you wanna expand that, you wanna do one to three recipes, you wanna expand those things without adding water, um, you're not gonna be able to do that. That being said, this brewer allows you to add water. So it's, it's a bit of a trade there. You know, other brewers don't allow you to do that. This one does, but it's something I'd love to see improve for the future. And then last but not least is it's um, just it's ergonomics of the whole device. Um, for me, you could probably see I was struggling there trying to get some leverage on the shot itself. It's not bad, okay? This isn't a bad uh, experience. It's just not perfect. And it's definitely something that we can improve on. You know, you guys know I'm really critical in these reviews. It's exactly why I do them. I would love to see them expand this, grow this, so that the version two, if it ever happens, would just be a little bit more ergonomically friendly. I guess it's a small sacrifice you take for being such a beautiful brewer, but I'd love to know what your thoughts are in the chat for sure. Please let me know. Now we're going to talk about uh, what 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 I what would I love to see in the future beyond the things I've already talked about, and and how does it compare to the Pro 2? But if you haven't already, please uh, smash that like button down below. It truly helps out this video and spreads this to so many other people on the algorithm. YouTube is crazy like that. Google's crazy like that. Would really appreciate that. And uh, let's keep on going here. I'm just going to check the chat and drink some water. Amazing. If you're just joining, thanks so much. We are doing a live stream and we're talking about the Newton Brewer. So let's on, end on this. What would I love to see them improve on? Obviously, I just talked about all those different features, but one thing I would love to see as well, and you guys know this is a big sweet spot for me, is that 58 millimeter port filter basket. Just imagine if this had a 58 millimeter basket and you could use VST or IMS baskets from any of your espresso machines and just simply put them in this brewer and just use it on demand, it would be fantastic. This would be a great espresso brewer for many people and also a fantastic secondary uh, lever brewer. It would just open up some possibilities for some recipes that they wouldn't, some people wouldn't otherwise be able to experience on an espresso machine without flow profiling. This enables that. I would love to see that 58 millimeter basket. Maybe I'm asking a lot here, but I think it would be fantastic to see and a device like this. So how does it compare? How does it compare to something like this right here in the Flare Pro 2? And while this isn't a direct comparison, they are very similar in price, okay? This one coming in at $360 with the upgraded tamper, this one right here, and this one's 325. So we're talking, you know, $40 difference here. Which one, uh, you know, would I choose out of these two? And honestly, I couldn't say it would be one or the other. It would be very different devices for me. Now, the Flare Pro 2 is perfect if you want to travel. This one, it folds up. It, it enables you to uh, take this on the go. It comes with a carrying case. And I've done full reviews on the Flare Pro 2, so I'm not going to go in depth here. Go watch those videos if you want to know about this device here. But the Newton, it's not, it's not competing in the same way. This isn't a travel device. While you can take this traveling, it's one solid piece and it won't get damaged in a suitcase by any means. It's a very different experience. This, for me, this is something that sits on your kitchen. It's, it's meant to be a beautiful piece of art that brews great espresso. The Pro 2 is supposed to be just so, uh, just functional in its design. Now this doesn't have a brew gauge, something else I'd love to see for sure, but Newton has gone on the record saying the way that this is engineered, it's very close to nine bars of pressure and brewing espresso. But I'd love to see that. That's something I wanna see, you know, I want that tactical feedback. I wanna see that with my own eyes. The Pro 2 has that. These are small features that I geek out about. Overall though, what I, which one would I choose? As a daily driver, uh, I'd probably choose the Flare. But if this was something that I wanted to put on my kitchen, something that would fit on my brew bar, just stand out, be unique, have something different. Um, there are people out there who are like that. Maybe you're one of them. The Brewa is a fantastic, fantastic piece of engineering. 
I'd love to I'd love you to let me know in the comments right now which which would you choose out of these two which one would you prefer out of the Brua and the Flare Pro 2 I would absolutely love to know all right well that's that's my my thoughts here the Brua it's a fantastic device it's beautiful it's ergonomic but it needs improvement it's not perfect and that's like anything in the espresso world or the coffee world I'm so excited to see, honestly, things like this continually coming out in this world. It's fantastic to see the coffee industry continually grow. Uh, it warms my heart so, so much and just new innovations all the time. And I'm sure 2021 has been an amazing year in coffee. I'm even more excited, mo even more excited for 2022 and see how the coffee industry grows over the next year. All right, I'm going to take a sip of water here, answer some Q&A. If you guys have any in the chat, let me know, and then we're going to end this live stream. Awesome. Hope you guys are doing so, so well. Now, something I didn't mention, and uh, thank you for those who have donated, um, Something I didn't mention that any donations on a live stream not expected, obviously, at all. Uh, but if that does happen, then 50% uh, of that goes to the World Coffee Research Foundation, goes to charity. So I just want to point that out there. How's the fellow mug treating you? Yeah, so right now I have water in this right here, uh, not coffee, but I have <laughs> three or four of these. This is the Carter. This is the Everywhere mug. This is the bigger size. I believe it's 16 ounces. Um, fantastic. Fantastic cup, can't go wrong here. This is something that will keep your coffee hot for hours or your ice water cold for hours too. All right, guys, well, I think I'm gonna end it here. I'm so grateful for all of you. I hope you guys are doing absolutely well. Uh, if you haven't already, be sure to drop a follow on my Instagram. The link is down below. In the next couple days, I'm gonna be doing a giveaway and I'm gonna be giving away 12 months of a coffee subscription from a roaster here in Canada. It's a competition that will, will go on and I'll post that on my Instagram. So if you're not yet, be sure to follow that. That's where all of that's gonna happen there. If you haven't yet hit that subscribe button, it would help out this channel huge and drop a like before you leave. I love you all so much. Have a wonderful night. We will see you guys all in the next video. Peace.